Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So, in our last video, we made a UI tab component, which will serve us very well when we move on. Uh, we're gonna add more stuff, more things to be able to place, more tools, more, I don't know, what, whatever. And our UI that we had was growing very much uh, sideways, so we needed to do something about that. So in this video, we're not gonna actually get to placing stuff or placing objects quite yet. Uh, there are still some things that I'd like to do. So I wanna make some UI improvements and optimizations. If you can see over here, you can see that my frames per second is currently around 100, which is quite a significant drop from what we've had before. And most of that comes from the UI components. So our UI system isn't very optimized at the moment. Every single component generates its own sprites at every render call. And then its parent takes that and draws it to itself. And then the parent takes that and draws that to itself. And that's why the more you nest these components inside of containers, inside of containers, uh, it is gonna have a performance impact. So the most optimized way would be to only ever redraw something if anything has updated. But there is complexity that comes along with that. So then we'd need a way to listen to all the single variables that a component has. Um, and there are ways we could do it. We could, in every setter, um, maybe switch a boolean, a dirty flag or something, and then redraw, but it seems like a lot of complexity. So we're gonna find a middle ground, and we're instead gonna do all of this drawing at a fixed rate. So you're gonna see what I mean. Let's hop into the UI container and where you see what you see here get sprite we're not going to do this every time so we're not going to do this inside of get sprite so we're going to cache this image let's go to the top and declare a protected image sprite and then let's here in the update say if state get time seconds dividable by and I'm going to start by saying 0 0.1, then generate sprite. So let's generate the generate sprite method. And let's copy all of this over there. And in get sprite, we're just returning sprite now. So, ooh, hold on. <coughs> Sorry. So here, we are putting our new image inside of the sprite, which means that it doesn't want us to cast it to buffered image, but that means that instead we need to cast the graphics to graphics 2D instead of just a regular graphics. We're gonna say sprite. It doesn't have create gra graphics, but it has get graphics. So these things you have to change and then the rest is the same and we don't have to return the image because we're drawing directly on the sprite. So just by doing this, we should have gained, we should have gained something, right? And we have, so if we are very quick now, you can see that it's not really responsive enough. It's still updating at the same rate. It's just not drawing at the same rate. So uh, clicking and everything should be just as fine, but you, you want the visual feedback to also be sort of the same. So we needed to update a little more often. But as you can see, we gained a lot of frames per second from just doing that. So I'm just gonna increase a little bit more. I'm gonna say 0 0.05, so twice as many times. So 20 times per second, it's gonna redraw everything, all of the UI components. And to be honest, I feel like it might still be a little sluggish, sluggish if you are super quick, but as long as you are moving at a normal pace, it is fine. And now we are around 500, and I feel like that is fine. But there's 
another optimization that I'd like to do. So remember when we made the grid? Um, we didn't do it very optimized. So for every square, for every grid square, we draw the square. And we don't have to do that. We could just do for every x, draw this entire line. You know, and for every y, draw that entire line. And that will work just as well and be a lot less draw calls. So let's do that. And we do that by hopping over to the display and the renderer. And here in render map, we have this if statement should render grid. So let's just cut that out and paste it below the double uh, for loop. So we're not going to draw any rects anymore. We're going to use draw line. And we're going to do one axis at a time. So we're also going to use the start and end position for a viewable starting grid position. So we already have that. So for int x is equal to start int x. x is smaller than end int x. x plus plus. Now we want to do graphics, draw a line. So first it wants the x position and then the y position of the first uh, position for the line and then the x and the y for the end position. So that'll be something like the x that we're at times game dot sprite size minus, uh, let's see, do we have the camera directly? Yes, camera get position index. Then start int y times game dot sprite size minus camera get position int y. Now let's just copy these two lines so we don't have to write everything. Most of it is the same. This line is even entirely the same, but this is the end instead of the start. So just from doing this, we should have drawn all of the vertical lines now. So let's check that out. And it looks as though we have. Great. Now let's just copy this for loop and change all the x's to y's so we can draw all of the horizontal lines as well. And now these will of course be inverted as well. So this will be start in x and this will just be y. And this will be end in x. And this will just be y. All right, now we should have our grid. And we do. So that's awesome. Also, you can see that our frame rate has increased quite a lot and it's fluctuating a lot and that's because of my screen recording as well. Uh, it makes it very unstable. But from the 100, we are at least around 8, 900 now. So we can be sure that we don't have to worry about it eating up too much of our resources. So yay for that. All right. Um, there are a couple of more things that I want to do. I want to move this auto tile below the other one. I think that that will look better. So let's just start by doing that. And I believe that that will mean that we have to do, that we have to make some changes for some margins and stuff. So the actual moving is inside the UI tile menu, uh, line 26. I'm just going to flip those over and I press Alt Shift and I press the arrow buttons. So the tile container comes first and the UI checkbox comes later. And I am more happy with this, but I'm not happy with um, this padding. And there are some stuff that I want to do. So let's just uh, get to that. Let's start by finding the UI checkbox. UI checkbox in here. I want to say container set padding new spacing zero. 
So no padding for that container, but we want some margin for the component. And that will be new spacing five for the top, but zero for the other directions. So that is one. The other is if you go to the UI tab container and go down to the UI tab inner class, here we said that we would force the contents that we send in to have no spacing for padding. And I think I've changed my mind. So we're still gonna force it to have no margin within this. And that's fine, because that makes sense uh, since a tab can only have one um, container. But uh, we won't force the padding. So it, it can have whatever padding it wants. So remove that line. And then I'm gonna go to the UI tile menu again. I'm gonna make some changes. So I'm gonna set a padding of five. And then for the tile container, I'm gonna remove the padding. So I'm gonna set a padding of a spacing with zero. So I'm just gonna see what that looks like now. All right, I'm a lot more happy with this. So it looks um, the same amount of spacing above and below. And this also looks quite good. All right, um, happy with that. Now, um, I'd like to make this larger again. So these are so small. And we had to do it like that because we were adding on in a row and it was sort of growing out. But now that we only have one active at a time, we could easily have them be um, their normal size. So I'm gonna go to the UI tile toggle and I'm gonna remove the get scaled instance. So let's see what that looks like. All right, but now it's very large still. It takes up a lot of our screen space. So I'm gonna start with actually increasing our window size. So when we started this um, series, in like the first episode or something, I just picked 800 by 600, and then we've gone with that. But we don't have to, right? We can change it. So I'm actually gonna make it a little larger. So I'm gonna head over to the launcher, and I'm gonna give it 1280 by 720 is one of these regular ones, right? So let's just look at that. All right, that worked. But as you can see here, it's black and that's because the map that the menu state loads in uh, is only 16 by 16 grids large. So now it's too short. Uh, and we have a new map. I mean, we fixed, oh, look, this looks much better. Uh, we have a new map, so we have this thing that I started making and you probably have your own, hopefully. Uh, so let's load that in the menu, right? Go over to the menu. Instead of new game map, let's say map io.load. Pass in the sprite library. I also saw in this main menu, the ISO bubbler was not centered. Uh, so let's just center children is equal to true. Let's check that again. All right, that looks a lot better. I like it a lot. This is looking good, awesome. I like that a lot. So the one thing that I would like to do now is actually to make a minimize button or a hide button for this part right here so that it doesn't have to take up this much space. Uh, I'm just gonna see how much time I have. I've used 14 minutes. I think we can make it. So let's do that. Let's make a hide button or a minimize button. All right, I'm just gonna head over to the clickable and let's make a class called UI hide button. And this will extend UI button. Let's just create a constructor matching super and 
I'm going to start by heading over to the button because I know that we are going to need to get these. So I'm going to make them protected. So whenever we start extending stuff and we want to be able to change these, they need to be protected. All right. So what am I going to... I'm going to make this a very specific button. So it's going to have a UI container, which will be container, maybe parent container. And then let's have a UI component, which will be component to hide. Um, all right. So this isn't going to take in these things. It's going to take in the parent container and the component to hide. So first of all, this needs a click action. This needs a label and um, I don't know if you can see here, I've gone into this website and I've decided I want to use these ASCII arrows. So first I'm just going to copy this down arrow and I'm going to put it back on the other side. You can find these arrows probably, I'll put them in um, I'll probably put them in the description or something, so you can just copy them from there. Uh, so this will be the label when you first uh, make it, and then it needs a click action here. So instead of uh, defining that in here, let's just do it outside. I'm gonna make a private static click action, and I'll call it add or remove. So this is gonna toggle and we get the parent container and the components to hide. So we're going to return and we can do it like this because it's a functional interface like a lambda. Um, so if parent container has components and we don't have this method, so we're going to have to create it, components to hide, then parent container remove component. So this isn't really hiding. We're actually removing the entire component. And if we decide to make some sort of hide or not display functionality in the future, we can use that. But for now, this is going to work for us. Uh, and we can fix it when we need to. All right, so that's going to do what we need it to do. Uh, let's just say add or remove with the parent container and the component to hide. Let's generate these methods. So create method has component inside the UI container. And let's just call it components. And that will return whether children uh, contains component. So that's all for that. Let's also have remove components and create that in the UI container. Components. That will be children remove component. So that is all. Now, we also want to toggle this label. So we're going to have to do that in the update. So let's override the updates. And first, let's call super updates. All right. So, whoops, sorry. Let's just start by saying label dot set text, and I'm gonna set it to this down arrow. Whoops, had something else copied. I'm gonna set it to that down arrow by default, and then we're gonna check if parent if not parent container has component component to hide. So currently it is hidden or it is gone, really. Uh, it's not there. Then we want to set the text to an up arrow. I just need to copy that up. All right.
I think this is good. Let's just check that out. Oh, we didn't add it, do we? That would be helpful, wouldn't it? So I say in the UI tab container, uh, in the constructor, at the bottom, let's just do setup high button. All right, so there we go. And here I'm gonna say tab container, add UI component new, UI hide button. And it wants the parent container, which will be this, and the component to hide, which will be the content container. Ah, maybe we didn't need an extra. Maybe we could just do that. At least just one line. It might be a bit overboard. All right, let's see. Now it should be added. And something was unhappy. Let's see what that was. If not, parent component has... Oh, I didn't finish this. So this dot parent com... Oops. This dot parent container is equal to parent container. So our references were null. Component to hide is equal to component to hide. All right, let's see again. All right. Ooh, okay. All right, so the functionality is there. I'm not feeling, uh, I'm not feeling the styling. But the functionality worked, so awesome, yay. So first of all, I want a fixed size. Um, do I do it like this? Uh, we do container, set fixed size. And let's do, I remember that there are 30 uh, high, so let's do 30 wide as well. I think that will be enough. But I'd also like for a different background color. And in order for that to happen, and we have to change the UI button because this just says color gray. So instead, let's have a color background color. And to make it work like before, let's set that background color to gray by default. But now we can override it. And down here, instead of color gray, let's say background, Oops. background color. That means that inside the UI high button, we can say background color is equal to color. I'm gonna say dark gray so that it doesn't look like that's active at the same time. It didn't really work with the rest. All right. All right. All right. Okay, I like this. Uh, I like this a lot, actually. Awesome. So now you could just be like, I'm heading over to this water and I'm picking this water and I'm turning on auto tile and I'm just hiding everything. And then I'm just drawing and drawing and awesome. Okay. I'm happy with these things. So for the next video, I hope we can actually get to starting with adding something real in this scenery tab so that we can add maybe a tree. I am working on a pine tree, so hopefully we'll get to add that in the next video. But for now, thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Hey, though.